Hello everyone, it's good to be back. Uh, I know you hate me for not making any videos in the past few weeks, and um, I, it's not like I don't I don't want to, it's just that I'm not able to. Um, I, I'm myself stuck at school, and uh, it's just so difficult for me to find time to do what I love. Um, I love discussing these things with you guys, but I'm so sorry I was not able to make videos, but today in the morning I got some really good feedback on, on the website, Enerati's website, and it gave me some motivation to make a few videos. So, um, instead of dragging along on the previous um, topics, we actually, I think we did cover the gain of the common drain amplifiers, and um, you know, we'll, we'll cover more as we as we proceed, but today I thought we'll start something new. So we're kickstarting our common gate amplifiers. Uh, videos and and hopefully we should get through um, I, well hopefully I should be able to make a few lectures today uh, let's see how far I get today's this is the first video for today so uh, let's see all right so the common gate ones uh, we've seen the common source they're I, I think they're really really familiar to you now so the RD the load is connected to the drain terminal and uh, the uh, this is the V out at the drain terminal again. V in is given to the gate, and source is grounded. And in common drain, um, same, almost same, but V out is taken from the source, and everything is just inverted here. In the common gate, uh, it's a very interesting structure, basically. So if we start drawing it, um, it, it looks a lot like the common source thing, but once you start drawing it, the, the Draw it entirely. That's when you understand what's different. I'm not going to put what is there, but as it turns out, it seems that you can give a V in. Here you gave V into the gate of the MOSFET. Here you're giving V into the source of the MOSFET. Really crazy, isn't it? All right, and and we have to give something to the gate. It cannot be just left uh, by itself, or else the MOSFET won't work. Right, so we give something called a VB, the bias voltage. Right, it's just a DC level voltage that is given to the MOSFET to keep it going. All right, so that's all it is. Not a big deal. All right, so um, all right now that since that is done, um, I, I want to say some one, one small thing about this thing here. So once this circuit starts to work, okay, what happens? It basically tries to take current from the VDD level and push it down to the ground, right? But as you can see, the current has to go like this, right? Through the MOSFET and, I mean, through the channel of the MOSFET and into the ground. But then the ground has this V in here, right? It, it, it's a, it's a sort, I mean, it's a voltage source. How will the current pass through there, right? So to make it practically or technically correct, uh, excuse me, this is how it, it looks like. So, VDD, let me write CG here again. CG is for common gate, okay? All right, uh, this is RD. This is the MOSFET with the VB, the bias voltage there. And this is V out. And here, uh oh, I don't know what I did there. Sorry. Hold on. Oh. All right, gone. Where was I? Okay. Here, uh, to the source, we draw a current source. You know, and we say that the MOSFET is now biased by a current source uh, on the source terminal. And for the, for, as far as the input, the input voltage is considered, concerned, I'm so sorry, I'm not talking right here. <laughs> okay, so this is a capacitor. We capacitively couple the input voltage to the source. Okay, that's all we do. Just to make it technically correct, you know, basically the current has to go in there, kind of a thing, right? But but for all practical pur purposes, I mean, to for understanding purposes, just let, let's just think that the the, the the circuit looks like this, okay? And, and to to prevent confusion, let's write down what each thing is. VTH is going to be VTH, right? Because once we start writing the equation, it really gets confusing. VG is VB here, okay? VS is V in, right? And VD is V out. Is that clear? Okay, so 
VGS is what? VB minus V in. VDS is what? V out minus V in. Okay, as simple as that. That's all it is. Okay, now let's start analyzing this. We know V is VS is V in, right? And we also know that the MOSFET for the MOSFET to start conducting, basically to start working, V we have to cross the threshold voltage. So VGS has to be greater than VTH, right? That means VB minus V in has to be greater than VTH, right? Only then the MOSFET can start working or else no. So to make the input output characteristics, I'm writing all over the place. So I hope you're writing along with me so that, you know, uh, it, it, later on it can get really confusing. So to draw the input output characteristics, um, V in and V out here. Talk about my color selection, huh? <laughs> okay, so the condition we need is what? VB minus V in has to be greater than or equal to VTH. Only then the MOSFET can start conducting. Okay, but what if we try to re reverse engineer this? Let's say. Uh, so what is the condition on V in then? So VB minus VTH has to be greater than or equal to V in for this to happen, for the MOSFET to start conducting. But what if this equality sign reverses? So VB minus VTH is lesser or equal to V in. That means we're going to reverse engineer from when V in is the largest value to when it goes smaller. Okay, So when this is the condition, the MOSFET doesn't conduct, right? It cannot start. If it cannot start, look at here. If it cannot start, the V out is hooked up to VDD, right? There's no current flow. If there's no current flow, there's no drop across this resistance. And if there's no drop across this resistance, the V out is directly VDD, right? So here, when V is really large, right? And let's call this VDD. Okay, but now V in starts to reduce so that this condition um, becomes valid, right? So VB minus VTH, right? At that point, the MOSFET starts conducting. When the MOSFET starts conducting, what happens? There will be a current flow here. If there's a current flow here, ID RD will be the drop across this resistance and V out will definitely go lower, right? It was at VDD before, but now it's going to go lower because of this drop here, ID RD drop, okay? And it'll go lower like that, okay? So let's write down what V out is here. V out is VDD minus ID RD, okay? So VDD minus half mu n c ox w over l v b minus v in minus v t h the whole square times r d is it clear how i got there v g s minus v t h the whole square times r d right pretty simple right not a big deal now now look at this as v in reduces it was at a very big very large value before as it reduces this term basically increases right that means ID increases. As ID increases, V out has to decrease. All right. Considering obviously VDD is always going to be greater than this ID RD drop, it'll V out will never go to zero, but it'll definitely reduce and then go to some really small value, right? And stay there. So that's that's. I did all this just to do the output characteristics, right? So that's once that's um, clear, let's go ahead and do our gain equation derivation, right? So one thing here is this is V out. We know what to do now, right? What do we do all the time? All we do is just do V out over delta V in. We just differentiate this entire equation with respect to delta V in, right? So I would really, really like it if you pause the video right now, differentiate it yourself, and 
then play it again to see if we both get the same value. We really great. It's not a big deal, but it's good to do it by yourself, right? So, um, so hope you've paused it there. All right. So this is what you should get: mu and c ox, w over l, and this, the two is brought out here. We get vb minus v in minus vth times. Now vb is a uh, constant, right? So that can go. I'm going to write that multiplication sign here. So vb is constant; it's gone. Minus v in with respect to v in is just minus one, and minus delta vth over delta v in times rd. Now this is a huge thing. Generally, threshold voltage. See, what is v in basically here? V in is the source voltage, right? Uh, let me write that down somewhere. Mm. Okay, let me just do this. Okay, so in the circuit, VB and V in, suppose, right? This, this is the source voltage, right? And the bulk is grounded, okay? And we know that from body effect, VTH is a function is a function of VBS or VSB, right? So what is VSB here? VSB equals VS minus VB, and B is grounded, and VS is V in, right? So V in is VSB itself, right? So it's a function of the the bulk to source voltage. So basically, it it cannot it cannot go. Um, you cannot cancel it when you're differentiating, right? You cannot call it constant. Okay, that's a lot of green there. Let's take a different color. Okay. So, where were we? Right. And we have a minus here and these two minuses. Let's just take all that and get done with the minuses, right? So, delta V out over delta V in equals mu n C ox. And the half and two cancel. W over L V B minus V in minus V T H. One plus delta V, what was that? th over delta v in times rd right now hopefully hopefully you've watched the previous lecture like the one um, if you go to Enerati's website and look at the le list of lectures um, the one that says the relationship between v in sorry delta vth over delta v in and gain in that lecture I've spoken about this a lot okay so if you just consider this thing delta VTH over delta VN. I just now said that it is actually delta VTH over delta VSB, right? And from that previous lecture, we know that GMB equals GM times delta VTH over delta VSB. And we call this term eta, right? GM times eta. So that means delta VTH over delta VSB is nothing but eta. Okay. Well, oh, we're out of page. Hold on. So, delta V out over delta V in equals uh, mu n C ox W over L V B minus V in minus V T H times 1 plus eta times R D. Now look at this. This is what VGS, right? Mu N C ox W over L VGS minus VTH is what? I'm so sorry about that. So that is GM itself, right? And here there's 1 plus eta times RD, right? That's all. That's your gain. Delta V out over delta V in. Do you get that? As simple as that. And all, all and again, remember, there's no minus sign here. Remember when we're doing common source amplifiers, we had a minus GM times RD? There's no minus sign here. All right? Perfect. I will try and make the next lecture today itself instead of delaying it all the time. Um, hopefully, see you in the next lecture. Thanks. Bye.